Before Sophia Ritchie became the poster girl for quiet luxury, she was one of my personal style influences because of her appreciation for well-designed accessories and her willingness to see fashion as self-expression. So today, we'll be diving into her style evolution. In 2014, it was obvious that Sophia Ritchie spent a lot of time on Tumblr. If you weren't glued to social media during this time, a huge part of Tumblr content was editorial photo shoots, stills from fashion shows, and accessory shots. This was also a time where alternative music was becoming extremely popular. In any case, the overly casual grunge look was cool and easy to emulate, but having the money to merge grunge with high fashion accessories was obviously rare for any 16-year-old. Hence why me and tens of thousands of other teens found Sophia Ritchie style so interesting. But there's another part of this equation that I want to talk about, and that's Tumblr's effect on style composition. With access to these images and looks that previously only people working in the field of fashion or entertainment would be seeing, it transformed how young people all over the world started to put together their outfits. We learned so much subconsciously about volume, texture, and patterns just by consuming this content every day. I may be overthinking this, and that's fine because that's what this channel's about, but I think Sophia Ritchie's style was able to go where it went largely because of the culture of Tumblr at this time. As she began gaining a following on Instagram, she started being featured in magazines and attending fashion week shows, launching a textbook fashion influencer career. But this was back in 2015, 2016, when influencing was barely being taken seriously, and the most respected of the bunch were primarily on YouTube. I think this says a lot about her style because though she clearly wasn't going for relatability, she was continuing to share her looks on social media and emerge herself in the world of fashion. And so the next few years of attending events and fashion shows, she seemed to go the more casual route of celebrity socialite. I was an active follower of hers at this time, and I do recall her having collaborations with brands, whether it be her modeling for them or doing a style pick of her favorites from a collection. But for the most part, she showed up to many Hollywood events, turning looks and experimenting with her style. This is where I think the roification of her style began. If you touch grass a little more than I do, you might not be aware of the TikTok trend demonstrating the effect the Olsen twins brand, The Row, has had on select celebrities. This transformation has been most notable on Jennifer Lawrence, Victoria Beckham, and Kendall Jenner. The TLDR of the roification is neutral tones, flowy silhouettes, and billowy handbags, almost exclusively from the brand The Row. Sophia Ritchie's style, up until her rofication, has shown her affinity for fabrics with sheen, quality knits, and an overall polished look. She seems most comfortable and confident in these types of looks, so for her to have a lot of pieces from The Row makes perfect sense for her style sensibilities. She's also been vocal in the past about Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen being style influences for her. So while this is being seen as some kind of rebrand, in my opinion, it's her maturing enough to see which brands fit exactly what she's going for. Which makes her hiring of Liat Baruch, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, all the more timely. I wasn't familiar with this particular stylist before researching for this video, but I can see by how she dresses her other big clients, Kirsten Dunst and Connie Britton, that her styling is most focused on classic cuts and elegant looks. She's been working with Sophia for a few years now and has been the reason she's able to pivot her style and make it look effortless. In the time Sophia has been working with Liat, she also experienced a beauty evolution, switching back to her natural hair color and going for a more bronze, super light makeup look. So I think it's natural for her style to now include a more traditionally feminine pillar. She still loves a blazer and a button up, but has leaned more towards florals and a warmer color palette. Occasionally when she wears something experimental, it's for a magazine cover, but for the most part, her style embodies sophistication and sex appeal in her longtime favorite, Chanel, while adding in some newer American brands known for striking that perfect balance between structure and fluidity, like Parenta Schooler and Kate. And I'm excited to see where she takes this going forward.